definitely a uh, star of 20, 2020 and 2021 in our boats around here. The Leggy Boy, Game Changer, Woodsman, Hybrid. Um, I designed it, I started fishing it um, a lot early season in super high water. Um, I wanted a fly that uh, would suspend and hang mid column, something that I could fish over, over top wood, fish on seams. You know, you're kind of playing a game with this fly uh, with the uh, crustaceous brush head and the tungsten bead. So you can vary uh, the weight of the bead um, and how much of this you use. You kind of got a little balancing act going on uh, to get it to fish at the level that you want it to fish at. Our buddy Russ Madden always says the, the best fly in the boat is the, is the fly that you tied that day. I tend to believe that. When I'm guiding in the springtime going nonstop, I'm tying flies every night. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm adapting this fly to the current conditions. It's a really client friendly fly. So start with a, a shank off the rear. Could be a 12, 13, 14, 15, whatever you got. Something a little bit bigger than a 10. You're gonna be tying a tail off this. So I'm just gonna lay down a little thread base. I'm gonna grab some, myself some marabou. This is a color scheme that worked really good. Uh, for me the last couple years. It's called uh, the Lanny McDonald. Let's see here. Clean this up a little bit. You can get as fancy as you want on the tail. You can go two-tone. You can do whatever for the sake of this video. We're just going to keep it pretty simple. Just going to tie that in. Just your basic woolly bugger tail. Nothing fancy there. Lay that down. I'm going to grab a couple, couple rubber legs. Time off the rear. Usually just go one down each side here to get going. So you have two, one leg for a total of two. You can do all your trimming of the legs at the end. So don't get too worried about that. I kind of trim them all as I get to the end of this fly. Next, you can grab your hen saddle. Hen. Here, just finish this off. Make it look clean with the hen. Use that. Cut this off. Big fan of the flexible resin a lot of good companies out there these days you've got raid zap you've got golf you've got solar res all of them are work great i just use i, I really like the the uh flexible for this uh, application and a lot of applications actually this time of year when we're fishing this it is like peak pike activity so um you donate a lot of these unfortunately Okay, I'm gonna grab another shank. Again, it could be a 13, 14, 15, 16 millimeter, whatever you got. I'm gonna go with some translucy brush. So throughout the progression of this fly, it's gonna be translucy brush, rubber legs, uh, hen. So it's gonna be as we as we work forward. So I'm gonna grab some one inch translucy. This color happens to be called shrimp. It's one of my favorites. It's like a cream. You could use yellow. They have a shrimp and brown combination, which I think they call mullet, which happens to be a pretty sweet color scheme. But for this one, we're going to use shrimp. Same deal here. I'm going to go a little over halfway up the shank. around a little bit Clean it up a little bit and again I'm gonna go another another set of rubber legs this time I'll do two down each side so I got two making a total of four
again, you can trim them at the end. Back to the head saddle. Working your way down, getting into the longer feathers as you go. I'm going to take a Senyo's trout shank. Usually when I'm picking these up from the shop, I'm going to grab the 23 millimeter. They also make a 17, but if you're using it exclusively for shanks, go with the longer of the two, which is the 23. That off. My favorite rear hook for any of these swim type flies is the A-Rex 274. Saltwater Gamers, real short shank, it's stout, wide gap, killer rear rear hook for these style pattern, this style pattern. Swinging D's, craft for game changers, you name it. I'm gonna save ourselves, save us a little bit of headaches here. It's knocking the edge off. Off that shank where you just where I just cut it with the side cutters. And we're gonna repeat the same deal there. So we're gonna grab our one inch translucy. Well, if you get overrun in your in your resin and it's going into the eye, take a stem and just poke that in there and get all that out. And then now it's clean. And then at this point, I'm going to go to a 25. If you use two shanks between the hooks, your fly will foul a lot more than if you used to use one long one. I don't think the action of the fly is affected by it whatsoever. The fly this of this size. So to each their own, but a foul fly is not fishing, so and it's more more work to do on the guide front. You gotta check your fly all the time, see if it's fouled while I'm rowing in heavy spring flows that gets a little annoying because the rower has so much to do with the presentation that time of year you really need to keep the boat in the right position so um there's that i'm gonna go one inch rubber legs hen two inch trimmed rubber legs hen so i'm gonna do two little sections on this down to the end of your hen saddle now you're lacking the, the big feathers right so you, we got we got probably gonna do one more section with this but once we're done with this section I'll switch over what's cool about whiting is their uh, their um, rooster matches the hen um, their marabou rat matches all this stuff as well so I'll show you when you run out of the bottom feathers what you can do with this next
again, jumping into the, the rooster saddle. You get down in here and get some of these bigger, webbier feathers towards the bottom. front same deal we're gonna grab a senyo shank pop that in there bend this eye out a little bit maximize the length like I'm gonna take a Arex minnow the minnow is a little bit longer shank than the gamrus um, this particular bead is the largest tungsten bead that hairline distributes and it is a seven and three quarters. So seven and three quarter tungsten bead. Um, these slotted style beads, <clears throat> you're able to uh, get even some of the small ones on this hook. So you can vary your, your sink rate of this fly um, by how much tungsten you use and how much brush you use for the head. The bead is kind of in the middle. It's not all the way hanging out it's gonna be covered up so i like to tie it in about right there and kind of lock yourself in and do this so we don't break our thread lay this in that might be a little long here but you can put it right in the slot Super glue. Lock that in. While we're letting that sit, um, like the vast majority of the flies that we design and, and fish and tie around here, this fly for our fisheries um, and a lot of fishers in the Midwest, I, I fi we fish this on a um, intermediate, so a uh, scientific anglers tropical clear tip for the warm weather. And uh, for the cooler temps, Scientific Angler's full intermediate. Both of those lines have the exact same taper, uh, same sink rate. And we're, most of the time we're throwing a fly like this on a seven or an eight weight. Two inch translucy. And deal here, couple wraps. One, two, three. About all we're gonna need. Kick that back. Same sequence here. You're gonna go translucy, rubber legs, feathers. Okay. Gonna nip it up a little bit so you know the full paintbrush going on. Rubber legs. You got two for a total of four again. Okay, go back to our rooster, the old mustard plug here. And sometimes I'll throw little red legs in here, sometimes orange, just a little mix, mix it up a little bit. A couple orange in here. 
Tuck those in right behind the bead. And what I usually do is I'll take a little throat slash here, a little red. I don't want a lot, just a little bit. Okay. I'll slide that thread up in front of the bead. Take the crustaceous brush. And, and every step of the way here, you're going to want a metal stainless steel brush to kind of rip this material back and as you go and like I said earlier this is kind of a balancing act between the bead and this material um, the crustaceous brush from my experience um, you kind of get a uh, kind of a rebound to it, right? It doesn't the, the the water doesn't just pass through this, um, and it, with that, it's got kind of an airiness and a buoyancy to it um, that allows you to to manipulate it and and you know figure out what you want. So if if you have too much material on there, you can always cut it away. Um, so I usually stack it up pretty good on there and really pack it in tight. And then I can adjust on the water if I want to trim it up. I'm going to trim it here, but um, the less you, you use, the deeper it's going to sink. The more you use, the more buoyant it's going to be and it's going to hang and give you that kind of swing and D type effect to it where it's unpredictable and it uh, kicks and dances around. So we'll get this locked in and then I'll show you how to trim the legs and uh, trim the head. We'll just kind of shape this head how we want it. I like um, serrated scissors to do this versus just a razor scissor, I guess you call it. Let's kind of come in here and blend this a little bit. Nothing looks more goofy than just the paintbrush head on it, like just without any trim. It's not going to swim as well. This stuff's pretty forgiving. Pretty easy to work with. Start picking at it. Can I get in there and clean it up a little bit? And kind of start pulling it out, cutting it on a little angle. Then it won't look like it just ends, it'll kind of all blend together. What I do to trim the legs, I just grab by the tail, flip it upside down, get everything hanging down. Sometimes they, the legs stick together, go in there and split them up. Aesthetically pleasing, if you want to cut it, cut it, make it all perfect, this will be the time to do it. I wouldn't worry too much about some legs being longer than the others. Um, common questions we get on this is, how many legs are there? I don't know. <laughs> I never counted them. But uh, you, you can always take them away. You can't add them after you get done tying it. So um, that's looking pretty pretty clean to me. This guy's uh, ready to fish. If you wanted to add more weight to it, you could simply add a keel um, to the bend of the hook. So depending on current flows, current clarity, you know, just current conditions, um, you can you can mess around with this fly and and uh, and tweak it and do different things to it to get it to fish deeper. This is a really ratted out one that caught a ton of fish last year. Um, 
you can see it's it's pretty much the same exact fly as this, but uh, you know, used, well used. So that's it, leggy boy, great fly for uh, in, in this type of build and this type of uh, um, you know roughly 15 15 hook 25 hook this would be something that we're going to fish um on a good year late march but definitely april uh and may around these parts uh, for smallmouth bass um, that type of time of year you're going to be fishing flies that are that are bright that you can see uh whites yellows chartreuse uh bright stuff are, is really fun to fish that time of year and that's the time of year where you can get away with the with the crazy color schemes and whatnot. So um, this is be a really good one to add to your box for, for pre-spawn uh, pre uh, smallmouth.